Have you been hearing the word mindfulness coming up here and there and everywhere these days? Are you kind of confused about what it means? Maybe you know a little bit or maybe you know nothing at all. In this video, I'm going to tell you and teach you all about what mindfulness is. It is simple. It is not nearly as complicated as it might sound. I'm going to really break it down for you and explain what it means. And maybe after this, you'll be interested in starting your own mindfulness practice or maybe just becoming more mindful in your everyday life. If you're new to me and this is the first time we're connecting, my name is Julia Christina and I'm a registered therapist, researcher, and online course creator. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I work to help men and women get through the crap that is holding them back so they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And mindfulness is one of those ones that can really play a big impact on our ability to like ourselves and our lives. And I'm going to explain why this is. But first off, you might be wondering, is mindfulness a practice or is it a way of being? Is it all about doing mindfulness exercises and mindfulness meditations? Or is it just kind of a way of going through life? And the answer is yes. It is both. It is, you can have a mindfulness practice, you can do mindfulness exercises, you can do mindfulness meditations, and you can also learn to become just more mindful in your everyday life. Now, what that even means, mindfulness is just kind of a fancy way of saying, be present. That's it. Live in the now. Just be present with what is. Because what often happens is we spend a lot of our time thinking about things that are coming up in the future. We even spend a lot of time worrying or being anxious or sometimes even excited. It's not always a bad thing. Or we spend a lot of our time maybe uh, thinking about the past, regretting the past, feeling guilty about things, or maybe even it's not always negative. We're thinking about good things that happened in the, in the past. But regardless, we don't spend very much time being present, noticing what's happening in and around us in the present moment. Now, for some of us, that can be kind of scary, paying attention to what's happening inside of us right now. But I'm going to tell you why learning to become more mindful is actually good for that. And it teaches us how to be okay with being present with what's ever happening inside of us, whatever emotions are coming up inside of us. It teaches us how to be okay with that. Now, mindfulness. There's been tons of research on it there. And even more lately, because it's been coming up more in the mainstream, it's not a new thing. It's been around for centuries, um, but it has become more mainstream lately. And so there's been a lot of research. And what research has found is it helps with a ton of things. As far as mental health struggles, it can really help with depression, with anxiety. It can help with panic disorders. It can help with eating disorders. It can help with chronic pain. It can help with self-esteem issues. And, and lots of other things. There's actually a, like a whole bunch of things that it can help with emotionally, um, psychologically, physically. So you can Google it afterwards. What are some of the benefits of mindfulness? And there are a lot of things that it really does help with. The essence of mindfulness. So what it really does is it teaches us by learning to become present. What it really does is it slows down the brain instead of spending our time thinking about what I have to do or what's going on or what's coming next or what I have to be worried about or what I have to be planning for or whatever it is or in the past, like something that happened in the past, something that, you know, that I'm upset about or that I'm, that I'm, that I'm angry about or that I'm regretting or feeling guilty about. I'm spending all these time and all this time and you sometimes maybe even feel like, I don't know if this happens to you, but feels like there's monkeys in your brain kind of jumping all over the place, going from one thought to the next, here and there and everywhere. And maybe one time frame to the next, you're going from the future to the past and all around. And you can really feel like your head is spinning. So what mindfulness does is it teaches us how to really just slow down the brain. It teaches our brain how to just be present and observe what's happening right here 
and right now. And when I say observe, I really mean just observe. I mean observe without judging. Observe without kind of having a bunch of ideas about what this thought means or what what it what it what we see in our surroundings or what are what we're experiencing. We're not going to what it means. We're not attaching a bunch of meaning to it. We're not attaching a bunch of judgment to it. We're just noticing with kindness, with curiosity, and with acceptance. So practically speaking, what does that look like? Let's say you're feeling you're feeling really upset about something, or maybe you're feeling, um, if someone said something and it upset you and you notice yourself feeling, like your feelings got hurt. Um, and you might say to yourself something like, okay, maybe one or two ways. You might say something like, okay, just get over it. Stop getting upset about stuff like this. Why do you always take things so personally? What's wrong with you? And we attach all of this meaning. So the thing that's happening is that I'm feeling hurt. That's what it is. And then I go in, typically we kind of go in and we attach all this meaning to it. What does this mean? What does this say about me? What should I be feeling? What should I be thinking? And we kind of get more worked up because we're attaching a bunch of stuff to it. Or we go the other way and we find a bunch of evidence to support whatever it is that we're feeling. We'll say something like, I'm feeling really hurt. Why does everyone always, why is everyone always out to get me? Why are people so mean? Why is life so hard? Why is, why do I always get the butt end of the stick? And we'll really spiral ourselves down into feeling even worse. So whichever way you do it, if you blame yourself for how you're feeling or you blame others for how you're feeling, either way, it gets even more messy. So with our same example, where mindfulness would come in is learning how to feel hurt and to just notice it. Notice it without judgment. Notice it without getting a bunch of stuff attached to it. Notice it with curiosity, saying, wow, I notice that I'm feeling hurt right now. That's what's happening. Whether it's right or wrong or good or bad or serving or unserving or helpful or unhelpful is irrelevant in this moment. What is happening is that I'm feeling hurt. And it might sound to you like that's it, that's all you do. And yes, that is all there is to it. And you might notice if you just allow yourself to feel your feeling, you will notice that the feeling will be way less intense and it'll probably pass through you. You'll probably move through the feeling a lot quicker than if you are attaching all of this stuff to it. You might even, you might even approach your hurt with curiosity. Be like, oh, I notice I'm feeling hurt right now. I wonder what just happened that made me feel hurt. I wonder why what they said hurt me. Do you see the difference? We're just, we're, we're approaching that feeling with curiosity, with acceptance. We're just saying, this is what I'm feeling. We're not resigning ourselves to the feeling. We're not saying, well, I guess I'm just gonna feel hurt forever. I guess hurt is just here from now on and I'm never gonna feel better again. That's not what accepting is. Accepting means that we say to ourselves, this is what's happening right now. Mindfulness is not a lot fancier than that. We can do it internally when it comes to our emotions. We can even, even do it externally. Practicing being more mindful in our everyday lives. Just noticing what's around us. Noticing what we smell. Noticing what we see. Noticing what we taste. Noticing what we feel with our senses, what we're feeling. If we're noticing the ground underneath our feet or the chair underneath our, our butts right now or whatever it is. Learning how to just notice and what it does is our brain, because our brain can't exist at two time frames at the same time, when we are present in our minds, we can't be worrying about the future or regretting the past. All we can do is be in one time frame at once. And so that's why it slows down our brains because it's giving different, I'm gonna get a little bit te technical here, for all of you biology people or brain people or people that are interested in the science part of it, what it does is it causes different neurons in our brain to fire. It causes more calm, kind of chilled out, relaxed neurons to fire more grounded neurons. So this, as the saying goes, neurons that fire together, wire together. So as we learn to just observe and be present with what is 
instead of thinking about what isn't or worrying about or getting wrapped up in it all. We're just learning how to be present and those neurons are wiring together and we're actually rewiring our brain so that over time as we become more mindful and intentionally practice being more mindful we actually rewire a more calm and grounded brain altogether. Now I'm not saying that you're going to go from being this vibrating like super high strung person to being like this like super chilled out you know zen master overnight by any means but you are going to notice that over time practicing mindfulness over time you'll notice that you don't get as ramped up about things as you used to. We learn how to respond to things in our environment instead of react. We're not into in reaction mode, we're into respond mode. We're into, I notice what's happening, I notice what's going on, I'm present with what's here, right here, right now, and then I decide how I want to respond. What do I wanna do with this? How do I want to respond to this? So, Mindfulness, you can do it by just, you can become more mindful by learning to just pay attention and notice what you're thinking or feeling or experiencing without attaching a bunch of stuff to it. Or you can also, or I guess, and you can also start having a mindfulness practice where you do mindfulness exercises, you do mindfulness meditations. Research shows that about 10 minutes a day of doing a mindfulness meditation is all it takes to start changing our brains, getting the monkeys to chill out, calming down the, the, the swirling monkey here and there and everywhere thoughts. I have a mindfulness meditation exercise for you. I'm going to put the link to that in the description. So make sure you grab that. And also make sure you come and join my Facebook group, Good For Me Group. It's goodformegroup.com. Every Friday, I'm in there doing live Q&As. So if you have questions that you want to ask me, you can send them to me. Um, you can email me contact at juliachristina.com. I'll put that down in the notes as well. Send me your questions and every Friday, goodformegroup.com, I do a live Q&A where I answer your questions. Make sure you also like and subscribe and share this one out so that we can uncomplicate this whole mindfulness thing, that we can shed some light on it because it really does make a big impact on our mental health and well-being and our happiness and just our lives in general, when we really learn how to be present, how to observe, how to feel and notice what we're thinking or feeling or experiencing without attaching all of this other stuff to it. I'm so glad you were here. And until next time, take good care. Oh, and tell me in the comments section below um, how you find this. If you are someone who does practice mindfulness or if you're someone who's interested in it or if you have any questions about it, put it in the comments section or if you wanna chat more about mindfulness, let's have a conversation in the comments section afterwards. Take good care.